Hi guys, welcome to the Matter and Energy Review. This is just a quick review of basically the kinetic molecular theory, or sometimes just called the kinetic theory. But before we get to that, let's just define our terms. Matter is anything that does has two things, mass and volume. And remember, mass is your resistance to changes in motion, and volume is how much space you take up. So if you have both mass and volume, you are matter. However, there are things in the universe that do not have mass and volume, but they still are there in some sense of the word, and we call those things energy. Energy is anything that can cause changes in matter. And I apologize for how bad my handwriting looks on the iPad. Anything that can cause changes in matter. And both matter and energy are conserved. What does that mean? Well, if something is conserved, it's saved. So matter cannot be created or destroyed. So whatever amount of matter you started with, after you make it go through changes, you have the same amount of matter, it just is in a different form. And the same thing is true for energy. You start with a certain amount of energy, and no matter what you do, you can change the energy into different forms, but in the end, you still have the same amount of energy you started with. It's just maybe now more spread out than it was before. So that's called the conservation of mass and the conservation of energy, and both of those are laws of nature. They describe nature. They don't explain it. So matter and energy obviously interact. That's the whole point of energy is that it can cause changes in matter. So when we heat matter or hit it with a force, the matter undergoes changes, and those changes are what we're interested in. Changes can be either physical or chemical in nature. A physical change is a change that moves matter around particle-wise, but doesn't cause it to change identity. So when you go through a physical change, there's no new substances. Sorry, not new, no new. And the reason that no new substances are created in a physical change is because the particles that make up the matter change position but not bond partners. And the exact opposite is true for a chemical change new substances do form. And the particles do change bond partners. They might also change position. Whenever you go through a change, whenever matter changes, the properties change. But the only properties that we really care about when the properties change are the chemical ones, the properties that tell us that we have a new substance. So there are lots of properties of matter that are just physical properties that can change when the substance goes through a physical change. So for example, if you melt ice, that's a physical change. You still have water before and after the change, but the water no longer has the same properties. It used to be a solid, now it's a liquid. It's no longer um, the same color. Ice is usually sort of a whitish color, sometimes it's clear, and water is totally clear. Chemical properties, though, when, when the chemical properties of something change, the whole identity of the substance has changed. So if I take water and instead of melting it, I run electricity through it and create hydrogen and oxygen gas, not only have the physical properties changed from the liquid state to the gas states, but the chemical properties have changed as well. Water is a non-flammable substance, pardon the bell, and hydrogen and oxygen are both flammable gases. I know that this slide looks really complicated, but try and, and follow along with me as I explain the difference between physical and chemical changes using pictures. So what I have is on the top, and I'll just kind of break this into top and bottom. So here on the top above the red line, more or less, we have water, three molecules of water that are in the liquid state. This is a um, script L turning into the gas state over here. So and you can see we have one, two, three molecules of water that are um, represented with arrows that are curved to show that they're in the liquid state. And then, boom, we add heat and they turn into 
one, two, three molecules of gas. That's a physical change. The particles changed position. They got further apart and they have more freedom of motion, but they did not change bond partners. The Mickey Mouse ears, the little yellow Mickey Mouse ears are still attached to the blue circles. The hydrogen atoms are still attached to the oxygen in the same way. And so we don't have any new substances. On the bottom, we took water and let me get a different color up, let's do green. I have two molecules of water in the liquid state. I add electricity and I get as a result two molecules of hydrogen gas and two molecules of oxygen gas. So you can see that the water started out on this side as liquid water molecules, but on the other side I got two, one, two, hydrogen molecules. Those are two hydrogens attached to each other, so they've changed bond partners. Those Mickey Mouse ears came off of the oxygen and formed their own molecule and now they're in the gas state. So there's both a physical and a chemical change going on here. The chemical change gave us new substances, oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. The physical change gave us a new state of matter. When you represent particles in a particle drawing, you need to show the location of the particles, you need to show the right number of each particle, you need to show uh, what state of matter things are in. And you really have to watch out for the law of conservation of mass. You can't have particles in different amounts on opposite sides of your arrow. So on this side, for example, I have two blue atoms. Those are my oxygens. So on the other side of the arrow, here's the arrow. On the other side of the arrow, I need also to have two oxygen atoms because that's the law of conservation of mass. No matter can be destroyed and it can't be created out of nowhere. So I can't have two on one side and three on the other, or one on one side and two on the other, or whatever. I have to have two on both sides. So this is shown by the equation that you're given in the beginning. So if you're trying to represent a chemical reaction in your um, explanation of the science of your topic, then be careful. Make sure you know what the correct balanced chemical equation is. It should have coefficients in it, and you should make sure that you've got the same number and type of each atom on both sides of your arrow before you start doing your drawing. And figure out what are the states of matter that these things are in, and draw them accordingly. So for this particular unit, you need to be able to model physical and chemical changes using particle drawings. That's what I've done here. And you should be able to also just in general describe the changes that matter goes through using the kinetic molecular theory. So let's just do the, the kinetic molecular theory. There's five bullet points to the kinetic molecular theory. The first one says that all matter is made of particles and, and the particles are in constant motion. And motion increases with increased temperature or energy. And faster particles spread apart or expand. And then the last bullet, which won't really fit on this page, so I'll put it on the next one. Particles actually vary in the amount of interparticle attraction. So if I have two particles that we'll call them red particles that are near each other, they might have a weak attraction for each other, whereas these two green particles might have a very strong attraction for each other. And depending on how attracted particles are, that'll determine when the particles will be able to break apart, how much energy it will take for the particles to change state. So if I have these two particles in the solid state and these two particles in the solid state and I'm trying to make them turn to a liquid, it's easier to turn this one to a liquid because the particles aren't held as tightly as they are here, which means this will boil or melt at a lower temperature than this will. And that's important to realize because when you're using the kinetic theory, you want to be able to explain, well, why does one thing melt or boil before another thing does? And why do things melt and boil? Because they, as the particles speed up, 
they spread apart, their motion becomes more and more free as they overcome these attractions they have for each other. Those attractions never go away, but you can overcome them by making the particles move faster. So that's the kinetic molecular theory and energy and matter. See you guys in the next one.